I got an email today from a friend of mine in Florida who is planning to come here for retirement. He wrote me an email that he plans to come here pretty soon. He's in the process of getting rid of all his stuff and selling his house and getting ready to move. And his email sounded very familiar to me when I started reading it. And I'm going to share it with you as soon as I come back. Hey! Hello there. Okay, I'm not going to tell you the guy's last name. His name is Don, just like mine. I'm going to read this, this email to you, okay? It's not real long, but he's making some really good points here that resonate with me and what my experience was like when I came here and when I made the decision to come to Ecuador. And here we go. Don, I'm sitting here exhausted from working in the heat of Central Florida. It's 945 and I'm just worn out so bad I can't get going. But I'm watching a video on the YouTube channel, Abundant Living Ecuador, which is a good channel, folks. If you get a chance, you can subscribe to them. They're a no BS great channel. I don't, I've never met these guys, but they do quality work. They put out a good video, but it's Abundant Living Ecuador. It's it's an interview with an expat lady. She's been an entrepreneur and investor and now for four years doing great. I'm looking at the background scenery, which I believe they're up in Vilcabamba, which is anything up there is beautiful. Background scenery and listening to the story and my mind is terrified. The reality is that in time, I'm going to be there living in Ecuador. For the first time since I made this plan, my decision to move, sell everything and move to Ecuador, I'm scared. I'm just really worried that I have so much on my list, so much more to do, and I'm already exhausted. I know I've said this, but I'm all alone here. I have zero help, everything I need, I have to make it myself. There's no other influence than my own truth. He put a question mark. I'm sure slash positive about this decision. I'm 110% absolutely sure this is my path that I'm supposed to leave here. I'm so unhappy here. I'm very lonely and just then there's just no excuse for me to stay here. This is not in all caps for me here. I refuse to be stuck here in this old house at the end of the road and live out the rest of my years as a uh, years of my life as a lonely old man like my grandfather did. I'm terrified right now. This one is a huge, this one is huge. The mental part is indescribable. My house sale closes on the 15th and then I had 21 days to vacate. I'll be gone before then, but where, do, where to? I don't know yet. My tenancy plan is to buy a camper cheap, go to Ocala, Florida, where I lived before here, and base my operations from there. I'd give anything to have someone else to be a partner with so I could just go build fence today and have them contact the visa agency and make shipping company plans and help me decide what to keep or give away or sell. I got to get up. I get after it, man. I got to get up and get after it, man. I have to get my oil changed today, then go get more fancy materials. I need groceries and laundry done. The house needs cleaning. I have to get something for lunch soon. I skip breakfast too. Man, this is just a reality check from hell. LOL. I wish I had the money just to hire a mover and leave Sunday night for Monta. Spend the fourth hanging out with you, eating some really good food and relaxing with a view of the Pacific Ocean. One thing at a time. Yeah, right. Ha ha. Have a good one, Don. So, Don, you... <laughs> Welcome to the club. There is so much of what you say in this letter that resonates with my true experience. My channel is all about how I did it, what I went through, what I do. I don't give advice. I only recommend. You know, you you are no different than so many other single expat men that want to move to this country. But let me tell you something. There's only one way that you'll be alone here. And that's if that's the way you choose. You can, I didn't know anybody when I came here. I, all I knew was the landlord. And, and my first night was in a, a, a Airbnb that was a hellhole situation for me that I had to just get out. And that's how I ended up coming up to Monta, and then I got an Airbnb here, and it was a hellhole. Fortunately, the third day I was here, I was ready to go back to the States, but then I found somebody that could help me find a nice apartment, and everything was smoothed out from that point. It's important, Don, that you remember, you, you, you got to communicate. I throw out all kinds of opportunities for people to get involved in. Facebook pages, people to talk to, lawyers to talk to about your visa, insurance agents to talk about insurance, uh, shipping companies to talk about shipping your goods. I don't recommend shipping all your stuff here. 
I recommend coming here first for even a six month exploratory. Take your stuff, put it in storage. You have the money to do it. Put your stuff in storage, come here, get an Airbnb, or if you're gonna be, if you know you're gonna be here for six months, have still a coach or find you a rental that you can afford and, and get you in a nice place to live here in a nice area like here in Marseille Lago, here in the area by the mall where I live. It's a reason to be quiet here. You know, it's in place that you're right on the beach and you got a nice view of the ocean from just about anything you rent here. You want to take, look at my video that I did about the checklist. Look at that checklist and make it your checklist. If you have an organized plan on how you're going to do this, you'll be able to do it without any trouble. When you get here, I'll make sure that you have somebody to meet you. There's no, it's no fun coming here and not knowing, go left, right, you know, up that word I go. You need to have a plan for what you're going to do. My recommendation to you right off the bat is get that visa process started. I just did a video the other day with EquiAssist. Okay, they're right here in Monta. I also like Gringo Visa. They're in Cuenca. But if you're coming to Monta, it's nice to have somebody local here that you can talk to. And that's why I would recommend EquiAssist. There's other people that can do it for you. You may be able to find cheaper people. You may be able to find people that would be more uh, more expensive. But, you know, Equisys is a highly reputable law firm. They're first class. You need to think about getting that temporary visa. You're going to come in here on a on a tourist visa where they stamp your passport at the airport. That's your tourist visa, good for 90 days. If you're going to stay longer than 90 days, then you just have to get an extension. Equisys can help you with that, okay? But you need to get, before you leave the United States, I'm going to tell you without you having to go to the checklist. Port your phone number over to Google Voice. If you don't know how to do it, get in touch with me and let's talk about it. I'll coach you through it. Port your phone number to Google Voice and then close your phone account after you arrive here. Get that checklist and start going through that checklist. Get in touch with EquiAssist or somebody because you're going to have to get your FBI report and you're going to have to get your state background report and you have to get your proof of income together. You want to have all that stuff together before you come here. You have to get it off of steel. Now, you can get all your stuff together and send it off to the U.S. Department of State to get it off of steel and then come on down. Just make sure that you have a way, somebody that can get it from the states to you here. You either have them mule it in, you know, you find somebody on Facebook that's coming here and have them bring it for you, have the stuff sent to their house, or have it DHL'd. I, had, I went to DHL route, it cost me... $110 for seven pieces of paper, but it got here. And then you hand that over to the lawyers and then they will take care of everything from there. You have nothing to worry about. That's number one. Number two, join Mark Bradbury's Facebook page and get on, I'll put a link to it in the description, get on his page and start talking to people. Let people know that you're coming here. Let people know when you're going to come here. Also, more than likely, I uh, assume you're going to fly into Waikil. You may fly into Quito and into Monta. Either way, if you fly to Quito to Monta, you know, you'll take a taxi to get to your Airbnb. And if you fly into Waikil, you're going to need to make arrangements for transportation to Monta. I recommend Mon Zambrano. Get in touch with him today. Get in touch with him today. I'll put the, his link in the description and see what his availability is. There's nothing nicer than having somebody meet you at the airport that speaks Spanish, that'll walk you through customs and, and all that stuff, get your baggage together, get you loaded up in a car, help you get something to eat, and drive you to Monta. And he's a nice guy and you have a great conversation with him, speaks English, and he's a good man, okay? And then when you get here, make sure you have an Airbnb or a place to stay lined up before you get here. All right, the next day for breakfast, we'll meet for breakfast. We can meet in the mall at my favorite place, Dos and Camoso. It's about the only place I really like to meet people at because it's, it's open to public and, you know, I do meet some pretty weird people once in a while. I have a good escape route from there if I need it. But anyway, you know, you get in here, I'll meet with you. I'll meet with you and, and, and I'm not going to babysit you, but I'll give you guidance and tell you what to do and where to go and, you know, and, how to get by with, with getting taxis and getting transportation, getting around, and I'll help you. I'll try to help you not get green gold, okay? You're very lonely. I know that feeling. When I was in Mesa, I was lonely. I lived in Mesa for 10 years. I could count all my friends on two hands. I had 87 friends on Facebook, and most of those people I hardly even knew. And the other rest of them didn't even write to me, you know? I know that feeling. You, when you come here, you will not have any trouble finding 
other expats that have been in the same boat. You'll find friends here. I have 450 friends on Facebook now, and I've only been here a year. Now, this channel has helped a lot. I've met a lot of people, but I, I'm walking in the mall, and I see people on Magamax, and there are people speaking English, and I walk up to them, and I speak to them. And it's amazing. You'll meet some great people that way. Get on Mark Badbury's page again. Get on that page and get on some of the other Facebook Ecuador pages and start talking to people. People will be happy to help you. You don't want to come here and be alone. You don't want to do that. I'm terrified right now. This one is huge. The mental part is indescribable. I can't remember how many times I woke up in the middle of the night thinking I'm having a heart attack, sweating, panicking. What the hell am I doing? I can't believe it. You know, when I wrote that check to Gringo Visa, here I am sending a check, 1550 bucks, to somebody I don't even know in a foreign country, and I thought, you know, that was my first step. That was the first thing, dose of reality, that this is happening. There was no turning back. And then I started giving stuff away. I gave stuff, I took stuff to goodwill. I gave away nice shoes and nice clothes, nice shirts and ties and pants. I gave away kitchen stuff. I gave away, I can't believe the stuff I gave away. I gave away hundreds of pictures I had. It, yeah, it's a daunting task, and it's, 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 it can mess with your mind, but you have to do it. Put one foot in front of the other one and take those small steps and you're going to be okay. You're just getting doses of reality. That's all there is to it. Just breathe deep and relax and know that you're going to be okay. And one of the ways that you can kind of be sure that you'll be okay is keep your stuff in storage. Keep some of your stuff in storage in case you decide you get here and it doesn't work out. You can go back home. You know, you can always go back home. At least you'd have something to go to. I had to have nothing to go back to. I'd have to go back and rent. And that would be very difficult for me to do. But this is not about me. It's about you. My house sale closes on the 15th, and then I have 21 days to vacate. Yeah, that's about right. It's about the way I did it. I'll be gone way before that then, but where to, don't know yet. So you're going to be going somewhere there in Florida. And then you mentioned about the visa agency, yeah, and the shipping plans. I'll put a, a link to Paul Welch's um, shipping. Get in touch with him. Talk about shipping your stuff. But keep in the back of your mind that you really probably ought to just keep it in storage. You know, you can get rid of some things. You probably want to get rid of your car or your truck or whatever you have. Maybe not. You know, put it in storage. You can always, if you like it here, you can always go back, liquidate, get rid of that stuff, come in with a suitcase. I came here with five suitcases. And now I have more than what I came in with. I don't know how I could ever go back. Buck it up, man. You know, you're going to be okay. Don't panic over this. You're going to be okay. You're not, it's not like you're going to a, a completely undeveloped country. You're going, there are some beautiful things here. You're going to see things here that's going to shock you. i tell you right now, you're going to see some things here that's going to think, oh my God, where am I at? But keep in mind, Monta was heavily damaged by the earthquake in 2016, and it's in the process of being rebuilt. There's a lot of new stuff being built here and developing. So once you get here and you get settled in, take a deep breath, find good places to eat, learn where to shop for groceries and food and stuff, beer and wine. That's the important part right there. you got to know where the beer and wine is. And then get a routine. You're going to find that it's really pretty cool, man. Start learning Spanish. Learn some phrases and learn how to communicate with people. Get you a good doctor. Watch my channel. I did one on Dr. Garcia. I'll introduce you to a good insurance man where you can get yourself some good insurance so you're covered. And you're going to be okay, Don. You're going to be all right. This is my message to you. Take a deep breath and relax. You're going to learn all about tranquility when you come here. Okay? And there's no reason for you to be alone when you get here. I went through that. It was painful. But I've since then learned how not to have to live with that. And you will too, okay? So feel free to write again if you want to vent. You want to have you have more questions, feel free to write. Get in touch with other people. Start talking to people. There's lots of women here too. A lot of beautiful women. Ooh, ooh yeah. Okay? So get on down here. And don't worry about all this small stuff, all right? Because that's what it is. It's small stuff. Ciao, ciao.
playing a game of whack fuck here. Whack. Fuck. <laughs>